Welcome back to part two of our series on finding the acceleration of a mass due to forces. This time the question reads, place a 10 kilogram mass on a frictionless 35 incline plane and attach a second 20 kilogram mass via a cord to hang vertically as shown below. Calculate the acceleration of the system. Let's analyze this illustration before we start. So we have a mass right here and it is connected via a wire to this other mass. The second mass is heavier than the first. So we have to determine what the acceleration of this system is as a whole. What I would like to do first is calculate the force due to gravity on both of these masses. So I'll start with mass number one. Remember the formula F is equal to MA. That is Newton's second law where force is equal to the mass times acceleration. I can draw a vector to represent the force due to gravity where here is a vector going directly down. And to find out the force of this vector, I'll take the mass of 10 kilograms and multiply it to the acceleration due to gravity, which is 9.8. Multiplying these two numbers out, I should end up with 98 newtons. So I just found the force due to gravity being exerted on this mass. I'll do the same thing for the other one. So I'll get these calculations out of the way because they are important and they will help us later on. For this, we have a mass that is 20 and we'll multiply that by 9.8. That equals to 196 newtons. The reason why these calculations are important is because, say we start with 98 newtons. That's the force directly downwards. But if we break down this vector into its components, such as its x and y components, we can start to figure out the acceleration and the tension between the wires that's connecting these two masses. Let me illustrate what I mean. So say I want to find out the force of this vector. I'll recreate these vectors over here so that you can see them clearly. So again, we have 35 degrees. We have a mass and a force directly down due to gravity. If this is 35 and we have a right triangle here, then the angle that this makes is 55. Right? It's a simple calculation, 180 minus 90 minus 35. And again, that is one of our components. If I were to connect these two vectors via a third vector, so this was our y component, if I were to move this and place it right here, I can now use trigonometric functions to figure out the force of that vector. In case you're confused, here's what I mean. So I'll recreate this smaller triangle right here. So I'll try my best to recreate it, where this is 55. That's the x component. Using trigonometric functions, namely cosine, where cosine relates adjacent and hypotenuse, that being the hypotenuse and that being adjacent, Filling this in, I get cosine 55 degrees. The adjacent is what we're looking for. That will represent the force we're trying to find over the hypotenuse, which we found already to be 98. Rearranging for F, and I'll write down F sub 1 sub X. So the first force of mass 1 and the X component. Solving for this by multiplying both sides by 98. Let's use our calculator. Make sure that your calculator is in degrees. So multiplying 98 by cosine 55, I end up with a force of 56.21. So this force right here, which I've denoted as F sub one X, is equal to 56.21. Now it's not as simple as we did in part one where we now use the formula F is equal to mass times acceleration to find the acceleration of this mass by using 56.21 and the mass being 10 kilograms and solving for A. Because there is a tension that we need to take into account. So how do we do that? First, we have to make the assumption as to where the force is being pulled. What I will do is assume that the 20 kilogram mass will pull the box to the right. So I'm assuming that the overall pull will be this way. And it doesn't really matter how you assume this, you can be the opposite way, but how you create your equations moving forward depends on your initial assumption. So if I assume that it's going this way, 
And taking into account the tension, I can write down the tension, which I don't know, minus the force going this way. We found the force to be 56.21 is equal to a mass of 10 kilograms times the acceleration, which is what we're trying to find. And similarly, I can do the same thing for this, where I can write down 196 minus the tension is equal to the mass of 20 kilograms. Remember, mass times acceleration. And the acceleration is what we're looking for. Remember, it is a system. They are connected, so it's one acceleration. This is relatively easy to solve now. It's kind of like a linear system. What I will do is label this as equation one and this as equation two. I'll solve for t here and then substitute that part into this to find out the acceleration. So I will take this over. I have t is equal to 10a plus 56.21. And I'll substitute this, this expression right there. 196 minus bracket 10a plus 56.21 is equal to 20a. Now let's quickly expand this. We multiply this negative inside. We have 196 minus 10a minus 56.21 is equal to 20a. I'll take this term over where I have 20 plus 10. Notice that this switches to plus because we're moving it over to the other side. That's 30a. And subtracting 196 with 56, let's round it to 56 for simplicity, we end up with 140. Dividing both sides by 30, and that is equal to roughly 4.7 meters per second squared. Now keep in mind that the accelerations are the same for the system because the masses are linked together with a cord. Now, I will take this value, substitute it right into there because I can get the tension. We have 10 times 4.7 plus 56.21. That gives us a value of 103.21 or simply 103 newtons. And there you have it. Another example that relates Newton's second law to finding the acceleration of a mass.